What is up everyone? Kyle here. Welcome back to the channel and today we got another unboxing video. This time Hasbro Marvel Legends Age of Apocalypse set. As you can see right here, an awesome set and one I'm extremely excited for. Uh, a little mixed uh, messages, mixed results, mixed feelings on this set I guess you would say with uh, the core Marvel Legends fans. Um, a lot of people, I guess, did not care for the Age of Apocalypse mini-arc storyline that the X-Men uh, went through back in the early 90s. Myself, however, I absolutely loved it. I was 11, 12 years old when the Age of Apocalypse line came. I was reading comic books all the time. This was an awesome, awesome uh, comic book arc, I thought, at least to an 11, 12-year-old Kyle. Um, but some people, for some, whatever reason, do not care for it, and that's cool. If you don't like it, don't get it. That's what I always say. So, uh, gonna unbox these one by one. I can't wait to build the Sugar Man. I don't know if you guys have seen him. Big, big build a figure. Should be really cool to get into. So, hey, let's get unboxing these. All right, let's start the unboxing. We'll start with one of the heavy, heavy hitters of the set, Beast. More specifically, Dark Beast. Uh, there was a Beast uh, figure released in the Marvel Legends line, oh, about a year ago now. Extremely hard to find now. Was a big-time popular player. I expect this one to be no different, as everybody loves the Beast, uh, even Dark Beast. So, let me read the back of the package first. Marvel's Dark Beast, Dr. Henry McCoy, constantly experiments on himself to enhance his superhuman powers. Um, so, a little bio, I guess, of what I know about Dark Beast. I I've heard he is left the Age of Apocalypse uh, universe, uh, you know, and went into the regular Marvel universe, and he is still there to this day, is from my understanding. Um, back in the day of this comic, the nice thing about the Age of Apocalypse was it flipped everything on its head and changed uh, how everybody acted and everything else. As you know, Beast is usually a pretty good guy, doctor, soft-spoken, you know, hero. Well, in the Age of Apocalypse storyline, he is a bad guy. Uh, that's why, hence, Dark Beast, um, doing a lot of experiments on other mutants and uh, so forth. So, this was and must have if you were going to make this line. You know, I really hope there's going to be a line two or three down the road, so we'll see. But here he is, the old Dark Beast. Very cool. Comes with the Sugar Man uh, hammer there. Very similar to Thor. Got the artwork. The artwork on this pack is awesome. I love the sides of everyone. Same thing on the other side there, Apocalypse at the top. And there it is, the back, Dark Beast. Build the Sugar Man, as you can see right here. Very, very cool. This is one of the best ones in the set for sure. Let's open it up, see what we got. Very heavy figure, which is nice. Instructions, nobody needs them. Very cool. We'll go through the card art a little bit here. There's Apocalypse background. Very menacing. You know, we did get the reveal for the Apocalypse, so he will be coming to the wave as he should be. That's for sure. See you later. See you later. There he is in pack here. Dark Beast. So as usual, I'll start popping out the accessories. Like I said, the build a figure Sugar Man hammer there. So we'll save. We'll, we'll build Sugar Man at the very end. Beast comes with uh, extra hands, which is always a plus. A fist. An open palm. There it is. Obviously, you can switch these out. See you later. I would have to compare this to the regular Beast side by side, but I feel like this one's a little lighter. Maybe not. Maybe I was expecting it to be heavier. Uh, the cool thing about Beast is he's got articulated toes, which is one extra step of uh, articulation with the Marvel Legends. Great head scan, sculpt, whatever you want to call it. Look at that. That's a beauty. That is a good one. Beast is looking really cool, very full, got nice braids in his uh, mane. Maybe we'll call it a mane. I don't know. That sounds about right. Uh, I think I will probably display him like with these hands. Like I said, great articulation on the feet. You can pose him a lot of ways. 
a very, very good figure. Very good. Let's see. I don't know how easy it'll be to stand. Probably very easy. There it is. Stands up, hits the sand test. All the normal articulation is here, the double elbows. The head is a little bit, you know, it's a huge, massive head. It's on just a little, see, it pops right off. So there you go. I don't think it was all the way in the peg. It's a massive, massive head uh, with just a little pin on there. You pop that back in. But yeah, I could see that. I was, it's funny I was saying that because I knew it was going to probably fall off. It was so wobbly on there. But that is Dark Beast. Very good colors, very basic. Uh, it really blends together. It almost looks like he's not wearing any clothes, but he does have pants on. Um, but I do foresee this one to be very, very hard to get. So if you're out there hunting these and you see this, don't pass it up. You might not see him again. Let's move on to the next one. All right, our next figure, figure number two in the line, Marvel's Morph. Uh, Morph was in the Age of Apocalypse where, kind of an interesting character, Morph. He was in the X-Men animated series in the 90s, the kids cartoon, which I loved as a kid, obviously. Uh, Morph was a totally different character, looked totally different than this, um, but he wasn't in the X-Men comics at the time. Age of Apocalypse happened, and bam, there it is, Morph is in here, and I believe Morph left the Age of Apocalypse into the normal uh, X-Men reality too. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember hearing that somewhere along the ways. I don't keep up with a lot of comics these days. I just do not have the time. But let's read the back here. Marvel's Morph, a natural mimic. Kevin Sidney transforms himself into any shape at will. So there you go. He can move around. Moving and shaking. There's Morph. I don't mind this figure from the uh, get-go. Seeing the packaging and seeing the prototype shots a while back, uh, I would be lying if I said this is one of my top favorites I was looking forward to in the line. But you got to have some of these guys. You got to have some of these uh, lower tier players to, to even out your sets. It's just the way it needs to be. There it is. Age is four and up on these figures, as we all know. Let's open it up. Let's see what we got with this morph. Obviously, we're continuing to build the Sugar Man. Looks like we get a, a little leg action for the Sugar Man in this one. All the pieces. They'll add up at the end when we put them together. Let's see. Open it up. They got the cape through the back of the plastic, which is always noisy. Coming through. Come on. Actually, we do it this way. Oh, there it is. See you later. See you later. See you later. What a mess. What a mess in this place when I'm done. All right. We got Morph. Traditional body they use in many, many figures along the way. Looks like a little bit of wonky uh, right foot there. We'll see here. Very smaller figure. You know, we just compared the Beast. This is very Spider-Man-esque. Uh, Quicksilver-esque with the uh, butterfly shoulders going on. Um, a little bit of an expression on his face. I would have liked to see maybe more heads with him. I don't know. It's always a good way with a morph figure. You can get other heads, maybe even other characters they've never released that you could make yourself. Um, but here it is. There is morph. Very white, ghostly face. Nice cape accessory, yellow. Um, I don't want to say plain Jane, but kind of plain Jane. Let's see if he fits on a ringside stand. Oh yeah, like a glove. I say it before, I, I try to use ringside collectible stands for my Marvel Legends, my Star Wars, and obviously my WWE figures. But there is Morph in all of his glory. Yellow paint apps. Yellow and blue are two colors that pop together really well. Uh, I got some black accents on the costume. Um... Not a bad figure. Like I said, not my favorite figure in the line, but one I'm very happy to uh, put in there. I didn't have any qualms that I was not going to get it or anything like that, where I know some people do. I, it drives me nuts because build the figures, you got to get them all if you ask me. You can't just skip out and say, oh, I'm just not going to get one. Then you're incomplete unless you're going to buy just the piece somewhere, which I know a lot of people do that. So um, there it is. That's Morph. So we're going to move on to the next one. And the next one is... 
Wild Child. Marvel's Wild Child. Introduced into the Age of Apocalypse as a totally new character, and like a lot of these guys, have crossed over into the main lines, uh, from what I've been told. Uh, they are around every single day now. And Wild Child apparently is no different. He is a very wild child, from my understanding. Um, kind of a mini Sabretooth uh, is what I always thought of him as a kid reading the comics. Um, if you remember way back to the old school Toy Biz uh, Age of Apocalypse line, they did release Wild Child as a small... He had like a leash on him, almost like a dog of Sabretooth. Um, so it's kind of weird, and I'm probably just not knowing the characters well enough now. Uh, but I always imagine him being a lot smaller. He's smaller in uh, skinniness here, but I feel like he should be a lot shorter too. But I could be totally off on that. Like like always, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I was hoping, or when I, I don't know about hoping, but I originally thought with the Age of Apocalypse line, maybe Sabretooth would be the Build-A-Figure in the first wave. Maybe it'll be the second wave. I guess we'll wait and see. Time will tell. But let me read the back here. Marvel's Wild Child. Enhanced regeneration and superhuman senses make Wild Child an excellent tracker. There you go. Not much more to be said about the little guy. Um, but very cool in the box. Got his chains. Comes with a big piece of the Sugar Man. You know, very Sabretooth-esque. I mean, like I said, that's who he reminds me of. Um, I'm not sure what Wild Child's up to these days. I do know he's in the regular Marvel Universe, from what I'm told. Good for him, crossing over, getting another lease on life. Uh, here we go, Sugar Man piece. So it looks like uh, the back of the Sugar Man with this one. Cool. All right. Whatever. Now we'll pull out the old Wild Child here. See you later. And it comes with chains that are kind of all over the place, barefoot, but not too shabby right out of the pack. And he's got his chains on him, bare feet, crazy hair, really is a wild child, I think. Very fitting. Um, like I said, he looks just like Sabretooth, just like Sabretooth, not a whole lot different. Um, you know, not terrible. Not a terrible figure at all. I'm not sure how these chains need to go or if I'll even use them. I mean, there they are by themselves. I always remember, like I said, kind of being on a leash and having chains on him. Um, you know, I just I don't know. I, I don't think he should be puck size. If you guys are familiar with the Alpha Flight box set, uh, puck being really uh, small. I don't think he's that small, but I was kind of... Feeling maybe double that size, almost half the size of this. I, I could be totally off, but that's in my head, that's how he is, and that's how I imagine him. But um, that is the wild child. So there you go. Oh, let's see if we can get him on the stand, huh? See if he fits. You know, it's about, there's usually one or two in the line that don't fit on the stand for some reason. And wild child fits, so he's good to go. There it is. Uh, hard to pose these guys sometimes uh, to get them to stand without falling in dynamic poses. So I am a big supporter of a stand. But there he is, Wild Child. All right, next up we got Weapon X. Wolverine being my favorite Marvel character from back from when I was a kid. I was pretty excited for this one. Have to have Wolverine in almost every X-Men line. He is a hot seller. However, looking at pictures of this, reveals of this, seeing this in hand... This could be the worst one of the set, this from first appearance. We'll see what happens when I get it open. But there it is. Weapon X, Wolverine. I just do not like that massive head. That head just looks way too big to me. Very cool artwork on the side. There he is on the back. That is just a massive head on a little body. As we all know, Wolverine is very short, but boy, that head, and it's more of the hair on the head. It's almost beast size. Uh, we'll read the back here. Weapon X, armed with adamantium claws and superhuman healing abilities, Weapon X joins the battle against Apocalypse. Um, as we know, uh, in the Age of Apocalypse, or maybe you guys don't know, uh, it, he's a tracking down uh, Apocalypse, obviously wanting to kill the guy, but uh, he's partnered with Jean Grey. Uh, where in the regular X-Men universe, you know, Jean Grey and Cyclops are more of a thing. Well, Age of Apocalypse, it's Weapon X and Jean Grey. 
So there you go. Uh, continue to build the Sugar Man here. We'll see if my first impressions are correct. I mean, this is a very strong set, as I've said before. Here's the Sugar Man. We got the other leg. We got two legs. We're two legs deep on the Sugar Man. Looks like he comes with like a, a wrist cuff here. Pop that out. I'm going to lose that. Huh. I thought it was like a can at first. I wasn't totally sure, but I think it might be a, a wrist cuff. Let's see. Well, maybe not. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. And that's probably how I'll display him, but... This uh, gives you his, instead of a fake uh, claws and stuff where he got his hand chopped off, you can have just the stub, I guess you would call it, which I'll probably display it that way. I've never been a big fan of his added hand. As you can see, there's Wolverine. Little side gig. Look at that big head. You know, this is the hand here that he lost. So I will probably take that out and put the stump in its place, is my guess. Give you the back. There it is. A better out of the package, I would say. In the package, he looks pretty crazy, but this head is still a little bit too big to me. Uh, I get the hair, the winged out hair. I mean, that's how he looks. It's a very cool figure. I just wish the head was just a tad smaller. Just a hair. I mean, it doesn't have to be a ton. Um, yeah. Yep, I'm going to have to stick with that. Uh, my original assessment, the head is too big on this one. It's really the only gripe. I like pretty much everything else about it. Fits great on that stand right there. There he is, Wolverine. Age of Apocalypse. Will definitely just be displayed with Jean Grey. You have to put them together in that Age of Apocalypse. And I'll definitely put this in his hand later but there it is weapon x wolverine all right we did weapon x wolverine so that means next up is jean gray the team have put them together jean ray jean ray jean gray can read and project thoughts and stun opponents with pure psychic force so there you go jean gray the heaviest package so far uh with the two big sugar man build a figure pieces in there this is a heavy box uh, very interesting how they put her on the side of the package there to get her in. Uh, it makes sense. You got to, uh, a big piece like that. What's the smallest figure? And Jean Grey is the smallest, tiniest, skinniest figure. Pack the biggest pieces with her. But very clever how they stuck her to the side without, you know, it almost looks like a Sugar Man figure with a with a build a figure part of Jean Grey. Um, there's that. A little artwork on the side. A little head scan, face, body. Sugar Man, we're building him. We're getting closer and closer. Let's see. Let's open her up. Whoa. Like I said, very very heavy package on the shelf. I don't know. Very cool. I mean, I, I think this Sugar Man is going to be a sleeper build-a-figure. Look at that head. I think it's going to be a very sleeper build-a-figure. One that's going to command a price on the secondary market one day. Uh, I think a lot of people are sleeping on it, saying they don't want it. And then they're going to regret that and go down the line and get it later on. There it is. This one's got his little suspenders action there. Yeah. Getting closer and closer. And then here's Jean Grey. Just off to the side of the package. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very smart on Hasbro. I'm glad they could do that. Get her a little, well. Her foot's all tied up. See you later. See you later. See you later. Making a mess here. We're going to be swimming in it. All right, Jean Grey. You know, traditional female sculpt for the X-Men line. Marvel Legends line, I should say. Nothing too crazy. Almost looks like a late 70s, early 80s punk rocker. You know, the short hair and the uh, blue face paint type thing. She's got the mystical hands that they give them every once in a while looks like they're about ready to do something special back two different blues and the red the colors pop pretty good on this one you know it doesn't 
Uh, the quality control has been good so far on all these. I haven't had any bum joints or bum legs that I've noticed yet. Um, very good. Paint applications seem to be really good on this one. You got one little red spot off, uh, kind of on the off the side of the abdomen there. I don't know if it'll pick it up, but uh, you know the the detail lines have gotten cleaner and cleaner. That was kind of a gripe with uh, the prior generation of these figures. I thought a lot of the paint apps were off a lot of times, or kind of a mess, sloppy. Uh, not so much this time. So this is a good one. Sometimes the female figures don't fit in these stands. I'm guessing. Nope, she fits. I tell you. This could be a game changer for a lot of you guys. I know a lot of people are looking for stands for Star Wars, Marvel Legends, using those expensive flight stands. Um, I build my own flight stands. Maybe one of these days I'll do a video kind of showing how I do that. But uh, these are great uh, ringside collectibles stands. Very cheap. Get the job done. Come in red, white, blue, black, clear. Uh, I really recommend those. It's cheap. You don't want to be spending all your figure money on stands that's for sure i definitely don't so i like these they're cheap and uh, readily available but there it is there is gene gray all right getting to the home stretch here guys we got two left next up here it is sunfire a very popular one look at that very cool effects there's the side of the package back of the package cheap plug for my figure hunting videos search back uh, middle of may somewhere uh, i found this whole set except this one i was devastated I was like oh now i gotta keep searching i gotta keep finding it walking out of the store found it somebody had it and they ditched it to the side didn't want it talk about some serious figure luck i was very happy to get the set complete in one day nothing uh, drives me nuts more crazy on a build a figure uh wave than not being able to get them all at the same time i hate piecing them together and playing the long game I want it all done at once. I guess that goes with every set. I want it all done at once, but can't always be that lucky. So Sunfire, searching ionized plasma allows Sunfire to fly, protect himself, and blast his enemies. It's good for you, Sunfire. Uh, you know, this isn't the Sunfire from the traditional Marvel Universe, you know. Uh, this is more of an on-fire, almost like a human torch type figure. Um but one that I think is very popular with the kind of translucent plastic, uh, you know, gimmicky stuff like that usually sells very well uh, in my my eyes, that's for sure. So we got two big arms for the Sugar Man here. Look at that big hulking, big time arms there, the Sugar Man. We're getting closer. A lot of pieces with that Sugar Man. Let's see what Sunfire's got for us. See you later. Get my stand out, get ready to go. So very similar to Spider-Man type body, maybe even Human Torch body. Very translucent. I really do like this figure. Very cool with the effects. Uh, I could really see that Iron Man 2020 Walgreens exclusive comes with the feet blaster effects. I could see putting those on him and like he's taken off. That's not a bad idea. I think those. I think that Iron Man figure will be bought up for the effects in a lot of places. And when it goes on clearance, I see a lot of people buying that Iron Man figure up to use. Hey, I'll put those extra effects to different characters. Um, there he is there. Might be a little hard to see with the light, but a little wobbly. As you can see there, I'm kind of giving him a little shake. You know, sometimes these Marvel Legend figures have a, a kind of soft joints like right at the elbow uh you feel like if you put any pressure to the side they would just break right off us uh, a spy master spy hunter i just can't remember the guy's name in that uh new black widow waves one like that some of the spider-man figures uh just the smaller guys usually it feels like they're about they could really break at the elbow sometimes and this one's kind of got that a little bit not as bad as some of the others but um you know, notice there was no accessories with this guy outside of the Sugar Man pieces. No extra hands or anything like that. Uh, I'm guessing the deco to get this one put together was pretty costly. Um, you know, it's got all the normal Marvel articulation, the ab. You hear the crunch? Um, pretty cool. I like the white. Uh, really, really plays off everything. The white on the forehead and the paint. Let's see if we can get him to fit in their stand here. Uh-oh. Yeah, he 
might not. Oh, we got him in. Wow, we're four, five for five on the stands. That's awesome to see. Uh, like I said, just makes posability a lot easier to do when you got stands um, to keep it there. Because nothing worse than walking into your collection room, see a, a domino effect, or people jumping off the shelves, trying to commit suicide and whatnot. Um, but there it is. Sunfire, one of the favorites of the set. Going to be one of the most popular ones. So we got one left. One to go. All right, here we go. The last figure in the wave, and it is X-Man. Not X-Men, but X-Man. So Nate Gray travels between dimensions, armored with astonishing psychic powers. Now, he was the first one from the Age of Apocalypse to travel into the normal universe. Uh, he was a very uh, well-liked character that really took off from there. Uh, and then he got his own comic book and so forth. I'm not sure what he's up to these days. I believe he is still around in the normal Marvel Universe. But uh, I was a big fan of the X-Man back in the day. So there's the, the front of the package here. A little side art action. There it is. Yep. And the back. Love the blue background on the back there. Very cool colors. You know, it's got that 90s X-Men vibe. Uh, very similar uh, color um, to the Havoc that was released with Polaris, uh, the GameStop exclusive, if anybody had that. Uh, that's kind of my first impressions when I saw this, that it looked just like that. We'll see. See how this one comes out. See you later. See you later. Now well, we got more Sugar Man arms. Sugar Man has four arms. See you later. I love the blast effect on the eye. You'll see it here in a second. A very cool. I do see a little bit of paint. Paint not perfect on this one. He's got a little splash of yellow, splash of yellow on his bicep. That's a shame. There it is. That blaster effect is very cool though. There's a side. On the other side, I don't know if you can pick up on that bicep there. A little little yellow slop. Back. It's got a little yellow on the back, too. So the painting application, applications on this one are a little off. Um, there you go. You got the typical articulation. A little weak at the elbow, I feel, but not terrible. Got good ankle movement. Um, this is a good one, though. I... I do enjoy this. I really do enjoy that blaster eye effect. That is something cool. Something different there. See if he fits on a Marvel stand. Oh, yeah. Wow. Every single figure fit on a stand this go around. That's a great sign. Uh, like I said numerous times, that makes everything a lot easier when displaying these figures. There he is. Pretty, pretty cool. I don't know if I can scrub and try to get that yellow off of there that might irk me a little bit but um not too bad not too bad on this one so that's it that is the entire wave we have opened now the fun part can kyle build the sugar man we'll see sometimes these pieces don't go in you got to heat them up a little bit but we'll see we're going to do a dry run see if i can get it together and this could be a complicated one so we'll see if i can get it figured out so let's build the sugar man all right, here we go. It's time to build the Sugar Man. I got everything put out in front of me. Here's the whole wave. Here's all the pieces. Let's see if I can put this together with no instructions. Uh, obviously, here's here's the back. Here's his front. Line it up. The suspenders are in the way a little bit here. Could make it a little interesting. I'm trying to get that back peg hole in. Let's see here. Well, get this down. It's already complicated. The suspender's in the way. You got to make sure you don't clip those in. as They will break right there. Nothing worse than breaking a figure. There it is. Suspender's in. Come on, suspenders. There it is. Now, now we're cooking with gas or whatever you say. There it is. Pump the front in. He's coming together. Now, once again, the suspenders in the way. Suspenders, you got to move out of the way. 
Here's my early tip and recommendation. Move those splinters out of, splinters, suspenders out of the way. There you go. We're getting there. Very cool. Let's see. The legs are always tough on these Marvel Legends. I've found you have to heat these things up most of the time. This one. Dropping things. Let's see. Yeah, the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, I don't like the little dancer type boots on him. There it is. Makes you a little nervous you're going to break the legs sometimes on these. I haven't had that happen, but it's very possible. You know, you got to really use some force to get these in. And some of these joints feel like they could very easily break off. You know, including this one. I don't want to don't want to press too hard. But boy, you there are, I mean, I get why they make it hard to get on and off, but geez, sometimes, uh, like I said, especially the legs, not easy. You got to really give it some force, some twisting and some turning, and there it is. Got the legs on. Bit of a fight so far on this build of figure, but we're getting there. All right, so let's see. Make sure we got our right and left arms here correct. I don't think it matters. You can kind of choose which ones go which. As far as each arm, you get to make the call. Choose your own adventure, like the books of the olden days. Um, Sugar Man having four arms, very, very cool. You gotta make sure those things pop. You gotta hear that click where they snap in. There it is. Oh. This one's fighting me compared to others. I'm trying to think what the most difficult one was. I'm drawing a blank on that, but this one. Putting up a bit of a fight. Suspenders getting in the way again. There you go. Sugar Man was a bad guy, obviously. I mean, he looks the part, doesn't he? But he was a bad guy in the uh, Age of Apocalypse. And I believe he also crossed over. I'm, I'd be interested to see who didn't cross over. Maybe Weapon X and Jean Grey? I don't know if they ever did. But there it is. Let's see. We're about, about there. There he is, the Sugar Man. That is... Well, this one doesn't want to stay in. Hmm. We'll get it here. Bear with me. There it is. All right, let's see if we can we'll put his hammer in this hand, I guess. This is like arts and crafts. I feel like uh, watching Bob Ross or something. There it is. Oh, Wild Child took a fall. It's all right. There it is, the Sugar Man. Big and bad, four arms. Love that tongue, little legs, quite the guy. Look at that back. That is a big, heavy figure. Very cool, the design on here. Yeah, this is a cool one, that's for sure. Boy, posability and getting him to stand, that is going to be some work. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to go. Well, hey, look at that. Stood right off the gate. That's great uh, work by the Hasbro team. I mean, a, a figure this he back heavy with these little short legs and the big arms that wide out, tough to get him to stand, but there it is. He's standing good. So that's the Sugar Man. That's the Age of Apocalypse wave. Uh, I guess leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the Age of Apocalypse. I mean, I don't know if you're like me. If you were of the age where the Age of Apocalypse was a really cool thing, or if you were a little bit older, possibly, where you said, this is terrible, this is my jumping off point, I'm done with X-Men now. I've heard both stories out there on the internet. But tell me what you think of this wave. As far as the figures go, I really thought it was a very strong wave. Wolverine's head being a little bit big. Um, X-Men, a couple paint blemishes. Also a little bit of paint blemish on the inside thigh on Sunfire. Wild Child being maybe a little bit too big, at least for my memory. Morph being a little bit plain Jane. An awesome build a figure. The Beast is an awesome figure. Jean Grey is not bad for what it is. Um, kind of a mixed bag, I guess I would say with this one. There, could it be better? Probably. But I'm happy to get an Age of Apocalypse wave. I can't wait for that standalone Apocalypse that's coming out in October. Uh, Pre-order that on Amazon. I'll throw the link up there. That could be one of the best figures of the year. I love Apocalypse. I love the skull he's coming with that he holds. Uh, like I said, I'll put the link up on my Amazon uh, for Amazon on the uh, comments here if you're interested in picking it up but I would recommend this wave maybe if you're not totally all in play the long game wait a while wait for a sale wait for some clearance 
But all in all, uh, a good set one. I can't wait to see who's in Series 2 for the Age of Apocalypse. I think there's a lot more characters they can expand on. I really want that Sabretooth. He was a favorite of mine, and I love Sabretooth as a whole as a villain. I'm hoping he is in Series 2. I would have to think he would be. Along with Cyclops is another one we're missing there. Maybe Mr. Sinister. Uh, there's a lot of characters that could go into the Series 2 line. But here it is, The Age of Apocalypse. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, this has been Kyle, and I'll see everybody soon.